Avengers is finally arriving to the Xbox Game Pass, ladies and gents. Of course, it's gonna happen starting tomorrow, September 30th, and you're gonna get finally the chance to play this game for much, much cheaper than if you were to buy the game individually. I'm pretty sure that this will work both for the Xbox and also the PC version of the Game Pass. But you're gonna get access to the full game as well as all DLCs that have been released until today, including that War for Wakanda DLC, which is why in this video, we're gonna go over the biggest tips and tricks you need to know in 2021 especially as a fresh player but also as a returning player that's maybe switching platforms as always a thumbs up on the video would help me a lot and let's jump right into it let's begin with the reassemble campaign which is essentially the main story of avengers and what most consider to be the best feature this game has to offer because you can totally treat the main story of avengers like pretty much a single player experience especially for those who never you know planned to give the multiplayer or the co-op a go in this game you get to test out all of the six starting characters including iron man captain america Hulk, Thor, Kamala, and Black Widow, and maybe even get them at least midway through level 50. As a matter of fact, you might get way closer to level 50 than that, given the fact that there's going to be a quad XP event starting really soon that will last until the 4th of October as well. But finally, just finishing the reassemble campaign will also give you access to the really cool Stark Tech skin pack for all of the six starting Avengers, which means you can immediately jump into combat or co-op and look cool without having to pay anything extra on top. Now speaking of looking cool, let's talk about hero challenge cards and why these are important for your character. Because each hero has one and think of these as kind of like battle passes where you have to complete daily and weekly objectives to make progress for that track which will then unlock and give you rewards on the way. Now these rewards can consist in anything from materials, upgrade resources for your gear, all the way up to cosmetics for your Avengers. You should be able to get at least a few of these missions done naturally as you play through the main campaign as most objectives revolve around defeating enemies or using abilities anyway so it shouldn't be too much of a problem but what you absolutely need to know is that only for the six starting Avengers are these hero challenge cards free. This means that for everybody else including the DLC characters with the two Hawkeyes and the most recent Black Panther there's a one 1000 credit cost attached to unlocking their challenge cards. So you can still play with these characters for free without paying anything extra on top, but those challenge cards that give you those rewards and the cosmetics have that cost attached to them. So here is where my next suggestion lies. Go ahead and complete at least a few of the six starting hero challenge cards that are given to you for free. Reason being is because if you do that, you get plenty enough credits to unlock any of the other ones that got released since then. In this case, it costs about 1000 credits to unlock one of the new hero challenge cards, but they will give you back 1300, which means if you keep at least 1000 of these credits in your inventory and complete the hero challenge cards that get newly released, you will constantly have enough and even an extra on top to afford any future releases. But let's move over to number three you're done with the main campaign maybe you even dipped your toes in some of the dlc content what should you do from this point on and honestly this depends on the type of player you are but there's only a couple of routes that you have either a continue with the story and jump directly into the dlcs these will add hours upon hours of new gameplay new narratives new zones and more important will unlock the three new characters added in marvel's avengers over the past year or immediately jump into the Avengers initiative which is the online multiplayer co-op portion of the game and start your journey to max level 50 and gear up your first Avenger. There's really no wrong way on doing this but if you want to see more of what happens with the main story campaign then definitely go ahead and jump into the DLCs first Otherwise, if you prefer seeing how powerful your favorite Avenger can be, then go ahead and do the initiative instead. But let's talk about leveling up and getting gear for your character, which is something that you will mostly do during the Avengers initiative. Maybe even in the DLC content too, because you can totally level through that maybe, but you're probably going to focus on the new characters during that instead of the old ones, so you're not going to reach level 50 unless you're sacrificing that character. But definitely go ahead 
ahead and start your goal to reach to level 50 which is currently the max level cap which will also give you access to your entire kit of abilities and skills for your main avenger and also on the same side power level 150 which is why i'm going to break these down in different sections too starting with how to level up the fastest now on top of the quad xp week you should also be able to claim a free 50 percent xp boost from the marketplace as soon as you jump into the game now there's a couple of disclaimers that i have for this xp boost right here on one side you actually need to activate this manually once you claimed it so go into whatever character main screen you want to level next the consumable section and then make sure you apply this boost otherwise it's just going to sit there in your inventory collecting dust another thing you need to know about this is that it actually only lasts for a couple of hours which means you will want to prioritize this for when you're going to jump into missions without any interruptions this means you can definitely pop it during the main story but just keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of cutscenes a lot of downtime in between missions which will kind of take away from that timer and that's why i suggest maybe keeping it for a little bit later maybe after you have finished with the main story campaign and just need to push to level 50 in case you haven't reached it already now also on the same note let's say you already finished level 50 with a character but are sick of leveling up other characters which are quite plentiful after a year of content there is an even faster method of doing this which would work also after that quad xp event is gone and that's gonna be black widow's iconic mission called from the depths in the northern expanse you can go ahead and do this really easily i already explained it in a different video if you want to see it more extensively but essentially you just have to kill the initial adapt weight in a starting area and immediately restart the level before the elevator becomes green or just as the elevator becomes green if you wait too long it's not going to work anymore if you do this right you're going to be able to just repeat the same encounter over and over again and should reach level 50 even without the xp boost in just a few hours with the xp boost it's going to be way way faster than that but it's not just levels that you need for your character it's also gear so let's talk about reaching power level 150 as fast as possible so first of all you will want to reach level 130 power level with your current character so that all future gear that drops from enemies and chests will also be 130 the last 20 levels is something that you get by upgrading your gear as well as your exotic artifact so here's a couple of methods that work the best to this day the first one is the vault method or what most people would call nowadays the old method that still works it's completely going to disregard any fighting or objective completion and instead exclusively focus on just opening up the abundance of loot chests that exist on these maps that's why i especially recommend the snowy tundra vault which is the best of them all and you can also like pretty much farm this it's also good at reaching 130 power level with the character and also past that in case you want something better with better stats another method that you might prefer especially if you already played a bit through the wakanda dlc is going to be the side mission called here comes the pain in the wakanda region unlike the vaults this doesn't need to be unlocked you don't need to find any special coordinate for it and it's also a much smaller area that will give you a high concentration of chests meaning that you can complete it much faster than the vaults and still get really good gear on the way i'll post a link down below to a previous video i made with all of these chest locations and also a few more extra things on top to better gear up your main now speaking of mains this brings us to the final point on the list which is going to be the idea of picking a main which is counterintuitive in a game that lets you play with multiple avengers at the same time which is ultimately what you will actually do anyway and that is to level up multiple mains anyway to switch between missions and objectives luckily enough even a game like avengers is pretty well balanced out in the sense that no matter what character you pick you should still feel powerful in any endgame content no matter the difficulty that's why i suggest to just pick the one that has the play style that you find the most fun or the most engaging or just the most satisfying and then worry about everything else when you're leveling up other characters on the side 
That being said, there is a meta right now in the game that we should cover briefly. And of course, at the top of the meta is Thor. He isn't a god for no reason. He is probably going to be the best pick out there because of his kit. So he has the highest base heroic rating, which means you're going to deal super high damage with all heroic powers and ultimates with minimal investment. Also, on top of that high damage, he also has some of the most insane survivability in the game simply because of his immunity during these heroics that by the way he can spam all the time with a proper build so he like he's the proper choice you can go with even as a beginner as he isn't that difficult to start with and did i say that he can also fly yeah flight is one of the best movement mechanics in avengers so he also has that advantage on top another really great alternative would be clint the second dlc hawkeye which really isn't too far behind thor in terms of damage as a matter of fact i found it easier to achieve higher damage with Clint with minimal gear compared to Thor. He has super high damage with his bag of trick triangle attacks, especially when it comes to elemental builds. You can definitely build something around cosmic or shock damage and just like destroy almost any enemy. His only downside is the fact that he can't fly, but he is still one of the most agile characters in the game, especially with his zip line that can get you pretty much anywhere. He also fits perfectly the archer role, so a ranged character that is suited for any beginner. Again, don't stress too much about this, even Kamala that up until recently was pretty neglected by the majority of the player base proved to be an amazing endgame character and likely has one of the best OLT melting builds right now that will literally finish that challenge in less than 15 seconds. So it just depends on the build, it depends on the playstyle you have and most important it boils down to which playstyle and kit you prefer the most. This is it, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.